Steve Savage with Metal Nexus. I'm speaking today with Ali, drummer for a Canadian death metal band Cataclysm. How are you doing today, sir? Fine yourself. I am doing great. So, yeah, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit uh, primarily about uh, the new album you guys got coming out, Meditations. I'm so excited to hear that. So that that's coming out, I believe, next month, right, April? Uh, it's going to come out in uh, June. Oh, come on, June. It was okay. actually pushed back a little bit with uh, some uh, some delays we had with mixing and mastering. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so June, and um, we don't have a specific release date yet, right? We just know June at this point? Uh, yes, I would say June 1st, okay. but and I can't commit to the label's call. Gotcha, okay. Because those little things could always change. So, <laughs> Okay, so we'll look forward to that in June for sure. So, um yeah, and, and I know you guys were recently, or maybe you still are, uh, were in L.A. recording some, some videos for that album. Are you guys, are you still out in L.A. right now? Yeah, we are actually yesterday night, and um, we're shooting tomorrow and the day after two music videos. Okay, a couple of music videos, and um, is that something that we can announce as far as, do we know which, which singles uh, the videos you guys are recording for? Uh, I have no clue if we're allowed to see which or uh, which one, uh, but uh, let's say the two songs we're recording are indeed two singles. So, uh, uh, I, you know, if the track listing came out already, I think it does. Um, yeah. Okay, so it's gonna be narcissist and uh, outsider. Okay. So those will be the the, the first two singles that will come off of the album. Or as far as they'll have videos to, to go along with those as well. But I think there's going to be an, another single first. But as I said, okay. this is a, this is in the works right now. Okay, so we'll we'll just uh, we'll just keep an eye on those things and uh, kind of see how they how they come out from there. So um, sounds good. So um, now on the new album meditation, um, obviously this is following up um, of Ghosts and Gods, which you guys won a Juno award for, which which was great um, for you know. A metal metal band to uh, receive a Juno Award, so that was great. Um, you know, so kind of big shoes to fill there. What was what was your approach uh, on this new album, kind of following up, uh, you know, the success yeah, of the yeah. previous one? Yeah, so. r huge pressure after this this album. So right. we really doubled up on everything. We work uh, like crazy. It was just insane. And um, yeah, I, let's say it started. The, the work started actually uh, as as we came back from the M, the MTV had bangers ball in uh, in Europe uh, was uh, December 2016. Yeah, 2016. So it's been I would say m almost more than a year we've been onto that, and um, a lot of work, a lot of uh, you know brainstorming. We actually you know wrote it together in the same room just like the band used to do back in the days in the arm of devastation um you know everybody was putting in ideas you know i took even my guitar out which is really not my field you know i have one but i'm just noodling usually so anything that you can throw basically to to make the songs better because it's it's just about for me actually it's always about ba making the best songs possible for sure so uh, i mean was there a different um sort of an idea going to this album? Like, I know it's called Meditations. Was there, is there a specific theme on this album that may be different than what we've heard in the past from you guys? What, what was kind of the, you know, the the, the, uh, the idea or the, you know, the, the thought process for the songs on this one? Uh, it's, it's uh, I would say, in a way, the, the following uh, the following piece after of Ghost and Good, meaning it's still going full spectrum. So if you listen to, to Ghost and God, you can hear it's going, really like uh, crazy blast beats to sometimes more heavy groovy stuff so on this one is the same you know some songs like guillotine's crazy grind you know super fast stuff um, then there, there's also like really melodic like the last song on the album melodic epic uh, visceral tracks and then there's this big you know uh, biker type of tracks uh, you know as a, a little bit like the black sheep so we're going you know all directions um, it's it's been quite crazy to try to incorporate all those elements together and still make it like it's one album altogether but it's actually working so we're really happy awesome and uh yeah you kind of mentioned you know the, the blast beats and that sort of thing and i and i know you're you're kind of big on bringing in a lot of groove elements to your drumming things like that was yeah, yeah. um was it 
Yeah, was there, was there anything um, kind of different that you went into as far as drumming wise? I know sometimes um, you yes, really like to explore course. different percussive things like the Latin influences, Absolutely. jazz, and stuff like that. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, the band, the, the tradition in the band has been those crazy northern hyper blast trigger, you know, gravity blast trigger things on the snare. So uh, I tried to, you know, keep the tra tradition going in terms of groove, but I, w I wanted to refine the sound a bit more. So you're going to hear a lot more, uh, you know, subtleties, dynamics, let's say, and the production, the mixer. Helped a lot, uh, Jay Rustin, the guy who did uh, also bands like uh, Stone Sour, Anthrax. So he's more used to to bands that are also touching the rock genre. So um, you can actually hear, you know, not only full out blast beats, but you know, grooves and nuances. So the the drum sounds is, are, are really like fluid and for, it's near, it's closer to what I like to play in in real life. Which the first thing I do when I step on my drums is never a blast beat. It's gonna be more like grooves, funk stuff like that. To try to incorporate that instead in, inside the the songs, you know, but mainly it was to make the best song possible. So the, the parts, the drum parts, are just in there to to accomplish that, not to do any showcase or you know a virtuoso type of thing. Awesome, and, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, you you and JF uh, Jean Francois produced the album yourselves, right? Yeah. So we work on that uh, together. Um, you know, as as I came in the band, uh, first first album we did together in uh, 2013, Waiting for the End to Come. You know, it was my first. The guys didn't know what to expect. I came out from this crazy technical band, Araxis. So the guys were like, okay, let's see what we've got here. So it was more playing drum tracks on top of guitar riffs. Then in Ghosts and Gods, I was working on the arrangements. So the guys started to understand a bit more how I was thinking and trusting a bit my approach. Uh, they didn't want me to change the whole band, right? Because you know, people are used to a certain sound and they expect, you know, something evolving in this, in this type of sound, but they don't want a complete, uh, you know, switch in terms of style. So on this last record, they, they knew I was I was <laughs> to be trusted. So they, uh, they grant me the, um, the production works and I could actually work and even, you know, write some songs uh, with my guitar and stuff like that, so it's really a, a blessing to be able to not only play drums but you know, be more fulfilled as a, you know, producer. And uh, I would I wouldn't call myself a guitarist, but uh, you know, try to just bring in ideas. You know, the more you can bring to your band, the, the best you, you feel, and you know, the more accomplished you feel in a way. And if then the people like it, then you you're at your best as an artist. That's that's the best you can you can expect. Oh, definitely, and um, yeah, and so just again talking about the uh, the production of the album, was was that um, was that recorded? Because I think you have your own studio, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, was that yes, recorded? it was recorded at, a, uh, at my studio. Uh, it's okay. like in the northern regions near Montreal, so we recorded vocals, drums, and all this stuff there. And um, yeah, and uh, then we sent the mix to LA to Jay Rustin, and then it got mastered in New York by uh, Paul August, which who also mastered bands like Pantera and stuff like that. So we really had a, a, an awesome team to work with. And you know the at every step you know everything was put on the line like we so so you could you can hear it you know in the final product that it's just like it comes from the gut you know we put all our passion into that and energy uh, I'm really still like drained I would say from from making this album like I haven't recovered right. <laughs> it's been completely nuts so actually the tour we're leaving for with the the other side project Exo is gonna feel like a holiday we're leaving in about two weeks. Yeah, so take, no, to take a break to, from to it. Play a little bit. Step. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and you do, you mentioned uh, XDO, which I did want to ask you about that as well, because you and uh, Mauricio are both in that band, which is kind of a, kind of a side project, which is um, a little bit different theme, kind of focusing on uh, Roman Empire history and things like that. Um, yep. So I just kind of wanted to ask you, is it, is it sometimes difficult to kind of separate the two bands when you're creating new material or, um, you know, is there a specific, you know, type of approach that you go with, with for one band versus the other or kind of how does that work yes. separating those two projects? It's different because, uh, you know, the lineup is almost the same. So we have to be very, very careful of what we what we're doing when we're writing for for this other band uh, you know we're very very critical on uh, on the work and uh, try to very like separate first thing we do is if we're about to to start entering writing process with xdo we completely cut off anything related to cataclysm to not 
you know, so we can switch our brains kind of in a different mode and think differently a little bit, even though we're the same guys. So we have to orient the way we're writing, the grooves, all this stuff in a, in a different way. So people will get a different, you know, a different band, even though the members is pretty much the same lineup. Only one guy is added, basically, it's uh, the bass player, Daniel. So, yeah, it's it's not easy, and I would say in terms of drumming and that, it's more, uh, I would say more rock in a way, so it's way less technical, um, and it's more, you know, we're working on the groove, and w the point is to immerse, you know, the, the listener in a, another kind of, like, universe, you know, so, um, you know, Cataclysm is more the street band, so the, the other one, XD, was more theatrical and, you know, mythical, all this stuff. So that's that's the way we try to approach more in a you know cinematic type of of uh, view. Let's say. Sure, and then and uh, so you said you are going to be currently touring very soon with uh, with XDO. Yes, we're leaving in two weeks for uh, something like two, a month and a half uh, in Europe with the band Enciferum and Windrose. So this is going to be a long long tour. But uh, like I'm saying, it's going to be like a holiday. Since you only have to play your set and the rest of the day you're free, you don't have to you know, <laughs> mix or work on writing or anything. So it's it's kind of refreshing in a way. Yeah, not not a, not a bad gig at all. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, the, and then I I did read that uh, with Cataclysm you guys are going to be starting touring in June in Europe. Is that is that correct? Yes, we start the long festival run. It's going to be about uh, 11 or 12 festivals all across Europe, uh, Germany a lot, uh, Spain, uh, Czech Republic. So, um, yeah, it's going to be really, really cool. Um, then after that, for uh, fall, we're supposed to have a tour, but it hasn't been announced yet. So it should be Europe around October, November, and then probably U.S. not so long after that. Okay, yeah, because I know the uh, North American fans, we definitely want to check you guys out, so hopefully we'll have some of those dates come up pretty soon as well for the for the U.S. and, and Canada. I'm sure those folks want to check you guys out. Absolutely. Check out the new, really new album. Come. Yeah. All right, um, so that that was pretty much all I had for the most part. Um, so and anything... Anything else that you wanted to add? Anything that you know people should be should be looking forward to? Obviously, we got the new album coming out in April. We got the XDO tour, uh, which is starting very soon. We got the um, uh, you know the tour for Cataclysm, supporting meditations, uh, starting out in Europe in June. And anything else that uh, you kind of want to let people know about? And, oh, and we got the uh, we got the singles coming out. We got videos coming out. So, uh, any, anything else? Yeah. Well, if you guys can help support the band, you know it's it's. Uh it's yeah. like easy times for music with all the streaming, all stuff like that. So whenever you guys can to support, uh, come at the shows, you know, if you can get the album, doesn't have to be a CD, but digital, iTunes, whatever, this, anything helps to help support the band and, you know, allow us to make other albums after that. So, yeah. Definitely. And what is your preferred uh, format that you like people to get the music? Or I mean, or do you care? I mean, do you do you like the streaming, or do you like people get the physical copy or digital? What do you guys have a preferred way that you like people to to get your music? Uh, if you mean the band itself, I would say they probably like. Uh, well, it's always cool to have the physical stuff, but I know nowadays even myself, you know, I barely have CDs at the house. I you know, I sold mm. everything I had. I just don't have any room for that. <laughs> We're so used to right, that. Right, right. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, or digital, you know, buy the albums on iTunes. I, I, would, I would guess uh, this is the the best way to, you know, not, you know, occupy too much room in your uh, in your apartment or house and, and still have, you know, the, the band, uh, you know, help the band, I would say, because services like Spotify, like that's a bit different, you know, how streaming works now and, you know, all the, the artists, they actually get, you know, a little bit of help from that. Absolutely. All right, and uh, and I know you guys have a Facebook page, so people can check out Cataclysm Facebook, follow you guys there, keep up to date on everything that's going on. Sure, um, Facebook, Instagram, the website, cataclysm.ca. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Share share it. Um, you know, that's not what we'll put up the interview uh, on metalnexus.net, so everybody can check it out, and uh, be sure to like it, share it, kind of get the word out about you guys, and... Um, yeah, other than that, I think that's pretty much it, man. I, I, I thank you for your time speaking with Metal Nexus today, and um, uh, I appreciate it. It was great talking to you. Hey, man. Thanks a lot, Steve. Talk soon.